Well, everyone, thank you so much for taking a look at the video um, from our church uh, for this uh, for this Sunday. This is actually week number eight of the coronavirus uh, um, situation, and uh, but we're glad you're taking the time to do this whenever it is. And I realize that some some of you probably wouldn't be Sunday morning, but that's okay. Um, check us out as you have opportunity but make it a point to make an opportunity that you do that. Uh, this way it helps us stay connected to you, um, and we want to do that. Um, and uh, there are many other things about just what the issues are and what's going on, but you have access to all kinds of, of, of news outlets and, and other type of information. So I, I, I thought uh, for the most part it's best that we just keep on preaching the Word of God uh, to you, um, to ourselves, and uh, because that's that's what we need, let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. And Lord willing, soon we'll be able to be together and uh, uh, that it will be soon. Um, we were hoping and praying that it would be next week, but that does not look like that's the case uh, for right now. But there is some movement toward uh, uh, some of the restrictions being lifted, things like that. So so we'll be back with you again soon, let you know some other things. But But we're glad you're with us. God bless you all. As you, you weather this, um, you've realized already life, life is going on. And um, I trust that's the case with you and the Lord, your walk with him too. But we're going to pray and uh, we're going to get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for you this time together um, with our congregation, with our friends, um, that uh, we're able to do this even though we're not physically together right now. Uh, we're thankful, though, uh, for you, for your work in our lives, for saving us, loving us, keeping us and uh, taking care of us every every day of our lives. We're grateful uh, for your goodness to us. We're thankful for your truth and uh, your mercies and grace and forgivenesses. We're grateful for you and your righteousness and holiness and your sameness, Lord, throughout your character. Uh, we depend on that as much as we depend on the other things from you. We're grateful. But we pray you bless this time as we consider a few things from your word this morning, and may it certainly uh, be a blessing to each one. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. What well, as I as I would begin, uh, I'm going to let you. Let's see. Let me find my glasses. We are actually going to be in Exodus chapter 13. So if you want to, if you're following along, like in that case, you do have your Bible with you, uh, um, in one shape, way, form, or fashion. If you want to go to Exodus 13, we'll get there in a little bit. Uh, reading the text in a few minutes. But as the coronavirus reality and the hysteria and the huge, huge breaches uh, occur to our Constitution and Bill of Rights, I, I want you to be uh, understanding of something. As all this is going on about the virus, uh, the reality of the virus, we don't deny the reality of the virus because it certainly is here, uh, but there's hysteria about it, uh, there's science about it, false science about it, uh, good information, real shaky information. Uh, there's used breaches that are occurring to our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. And uh, it's, it seems like uh, there's a lot of upheaval yet, uh, and there's a lot of restrictions. Uh, it's, it has a sense of a sort of like lockdown. Uh, we can't make sense of some of the things that are allowed to be open and other things that are closed and things like that. But I want you to understand this. And for some of us, uh, some of us, it may seem like life is not just upside down, but life is on hold. Like, like life is on hold. We, we can't live life the way we want to. Or if you tried to, you would get yourself in trouble uh, in more ways than one. So, so I want you this. I want you to remember this. To please be careful not to think this. Not to think that not much is going on until we're released from the many restrictions or the lockouts that are now in place. Okay. Uh, hopefully you've realized uh, even though there's a there, there's a lot of areas of life that are just are, are have incredible limitations right now that that you realize that life life still is going on that that life is still marching forward and even if it seems that that life has gone the type of life had it went backwards for a while uh, I want you to 
have no doubt that, that God's work in the world still goes on. Even if we have lockdown restrictions, quarantine, all those kind of things, God's work in the world is still going on. And that includes your life and mine. God's work in the world still continues. And that being the case, uh, his, his leadership, his leadership in, in our lives, uh, his shepherding us uh, carries on unabated without any reduction of intensity or strength or purpose. And when I, when I thought about this, that uh, I, just like the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul taught uh, that the word of God, the word of God is not bound. He assured, I think he wrote it to Timothy, uh, he said the, the word of God is not bound, even though the Apostle Paul himself was bound in jail. He was suffering, in a sense, lockdown uh, and uh, separation and uh, could not function in a normal way of life. But he taught, even though he was restricted, and even though he had limitations, and even though he was in jail, the word of God was not bound. He suffered lockdown as an evildoer and a menace to society. It hindered his movements and his missionary work, but he said the word of God, the word of God suffers no such hindrances. So is the idea of the Lord's leading of his people. Whether jailed or free, whether confined or released, the Lord leads on. The Lord continues his work and his ways regardless of the coronavirus restrictions that we're living through, regardless if they're there or not. Our lives may be different. Our lives may be a little more difficult uh, to manage certain things. Our lives may uh, notice a little more maybe discouragement or disappointment or disillusionment, uh, they think we, how do we ever get into such a situation to begin with? But the idea is the Lord is leading us on. None of his ministry is quarantined. God's ministry, uh, resources are not depleted. He is not in a quandary about what the next steps forward should be. His will will come to pass in your life and in mine. Even if the coronavirus and the government and science leave us in a much different world to live in when all this is over, the Lord still leads on because his will and his word will be accomplished. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to read our text, Exodus chapter 13. Remember, I told you we're going to be there this morning, Exodus chapter 13 and verse 14, verse 14. I'm going to break in. Children of Egypt now have left, uh, uh, children of Israel have now left Egypt. They're out of bondage. And here we go. And it, God said, and it shall be when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, what is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. Verse 15. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thy hand and for frontless between thine eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure, or lest happen by chance, the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn to the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away from hence with you. And they took their journey, 
and, uh, 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 and encamped at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them by the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now, I wanted you to see verse number 17. It says, as the Lord is leading them as they're out of Egypt, now the Lord is leading them into the wilderness and on their way to the promised land. It says this, it says this, that God, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near to them. That was closer that way to the promised land, more like a direct route. He didn't do that because God said, let's peradventure the people repent. They change their mind when they see war of the Philistines and they return. They then return uh, to Egypt. Now, this text, this text is actually happening about 1446 B.C. It's uh, the Jewish people are liberated from the Egyptian slavery. It took a long time for that to happen, about 430 years. Uh, they spent time in Egypt, but the Lord was working all along. And when each piece and each person was in place, an actual time, the right time, the Lord led the liberation movement that freed a family who had become a great people that would be transformed into a unique nation that would give us the scriptures, the scriptures that even laid the foundational work for Western civilization, a unique nation that would give us the scriptures, give us a savior that would provide salvation for us, that one day he would rule and reign as sovereign king, Lord of lords and king of kings. But I want you to notice verse 17. It says there, the Lord, uh, the Lord would lead them it doesn't say it this way, but this is the truth of the matter. The Lord is now going to lead them the long way to the promised land. The reason so that people would not see the fierce, rowdy, wicked, warmongering Philistines. So the fact of the matter is, so instead of taking about two weeks to get to the promised land, the Lord led them a different way that took actually two years. Now, we know we, they spent the years wandering in the wilderness, but, but the first time they got to the promised land, it was two years. Instead, the Lord led them the two-year way to the promised land rather than the two-week way. And uh, and because the Lord said, if they see these Philistines and see war, there's a danger that they would willingly return to Egypt. Now, I have to tell you this. The sea is a beautiful thing. You know that. The sea is a beautiful thing. I thought about when I was uh, putting this sermon together, you know, your eyesight is is an incredible, beautiful thing. Uh, we take our eyesight, like many other things, for granted, unless something's not right. You know, uh, then we notice and we start to think about how dear to us and how near to us our eyesight is. And the fact of the matter is about eyesight, uh, our eyesight, seeing, seeing all kinds of things and seeing all kinds of action and 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 circumstances kind of that we actually witness we see it with our eyes okay seeing elicits all kinds of of reactions all kinds of responses and uh and seeing is 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 so so just natural to us as it works with our other senses and it, what it does, it helps us formulate, you know, a life picture. What we suppose, what we're going to do. It helps us formulate our opinion about things and about people, situations. It helps develop what we like, what we don't like, what we want, our desires, you know, that kind of thing. You know, that's why the Bible says for us, we're to, we're to look unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, you know, as we run the race that's set before us and lay aside the sin that so easily besets us. Because seeing Jesus helps us to accomplish that. You know, the people, the Jewish people saw the miracles of the plagues in Egypt. And in that they witnessed how great their God was. What they saw inspired them, encouraged them, gave them assurance that they could do this. 
God is proving himself. God is providing for them and leading them. In essence, they say, let's follow. Okay, we're talking about sight. We're talking about how, how sight, what you see, elicits all kind of reactions and responses by us. We said about the Jewish people, they saw the miracles of the plagues in Egypt. Uh, they were a witness of how great their God really was, that they, what they saw inspired them, encouraged them, probably instilled some fear in them about Almighty God and gave them assurance that they could do what God had came, had, had, had decided for them it was time for deliverance. God is proving himself to be great and true and honest and a man of his word. God was providing for them and leading them, and they were in that it helped motivate them. What they saw helped motivate them to follow Moses, who was following God's leadership. But here in our text, uh, we find out what the people would see, would see if God led them the direct route, the quickest way to the promised land, what they would see what they would see in the Philistines, what they would see in the Philistines would, would, uh, the reaction would be fear, would be doubt, would be discouragement, would, would develop in them a, a, a mindset and a, uh, 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 their, that their emotions would, would start to, uh, would change and start to change in gear and change in a way where, where what they're now doing, they would go ahead and start to, think about and 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 reason this out that it would be better for them to go back to Egypt it's interesting and that's why God didn't take him that way God in leadership God could have said we'll go the quickest way it's direct route we'll be there in two weeks everything's going to be okay but but God knew the situation God knew what they would see would instill fear in them and doubt and help motivate them and move them that they would actually consider and actually go back into Egypt willingly of their own accord because what they saw, what they would see. It's interesting that, that be, because of what they would see, they would return. They would, they would turn, actually turn themselves in, go back into slavery in Egypt. See, they, they were reasoning that, that the Egyptian government would save them and keep them safe from all harm. Okay. But with that, they would have been enslaved again. How sad. And they were willing to do that. They, they, they would have been willing to do that. And God said, we, 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 we can't do that. We're not going to do that. I'm going to lead you the way in which you should go, even though it's longer, it's a longer distance, and it's going to take two years, not two weeks. So God would lead them in a different, longer way to the promised land. And as he led them, you know, he gave them visual aids, you know, the fire by night and the, and the, the, the cloud during the day. He supplied their vital, uh, their vital needs. He was vigilant in their protection and, uh, and, uh, their essential preparations took place as they traveled for those two years to the promised land. Essential preparations. They were taught about God's rule, about the golden rule. I call it about the grocery rules or the dietary laws that they were to abide by. Uh, the governmental rules, the civil laws were all uh, developed and instituted. The ceremonial laws, how to worship God in spirit and in truth. So, so all these essential preparations were made before they ever got there. See, God in leading them, God in leading them uh, in the longer way, okay, taking more time, God was ministering to them and helping them and preparing them for their eventual arrival to the promised land. What I'd like you to please see with this, okay, is, is uh, some really simple things that really do matter. Uh, first of all this, God, God knew who they were. 
God knew the Philistines. God knew what the Philistines were like. Uh, he knew their characteristics. He knew their intent. He knew their values of life, purpose, drive, motivation. He knew about them. He knew that they were troubled. And they were warrior people and what they would try to do to the Israelites. He knew what they were like. And something else I want you to see, that, that God knew who the, who, what the Jewish people were like. And God knew, God knew what would happen if they saw the warrior Philistines and their escape from Egypt. God knew them. God knew they needed to develop more trust in him. God, God knew they, they didn't need uh, extra issues added to this, this great monumental thing of, of leaving Egypt and following Moses under God's leadership and just going into the wilderness. My goodness, all those people. You know, with no plans, no roadmaps, no coach buses, you know, no McDonald's, no Burger King, no Wawa, you know, no GPS, you know, no laundromats along the way, hotels, motel, nothing like that, and that they would step out. God said, they don't need this over here to be dealing with these Philistines, because if they see this, they'll go back to Egypt. They'll willingly enslave themselves to the Egyptians again just to feel safe and sound. My, what some people will do just to feel safe and sound. So I want you to see, God knew the Philistines. God knew the Jewish people. And last of all, I think you can see from this that, that God knew exactly what he was doing as he led them to the promised land. So for, for us today, for us this day, even though uh, uh, things are different in our lives and there's restriction, there's all kinds of uh, uh, life is not what we thought about as, as normal and we feel like we can't, we just can't in so many ways be ourselves. Uh, and, uh, but I want you to tell you this, that that God is still leading you on in your life. And your Christianity doesn't stop and, 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 and wind up just here and stagnate and, until all this is over, because who knows when it's going to be all over, you know? So I have to tell you, the Lord is leading you even still this day. The, the Lord leads through His Spirit, His Word. The Lord leads through Christians that actually care about you. Uh, the Lord leads through circumstances, crisis, and even victories. The Lord leads. But John chapter 10, verse 27 says, The Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they what? And they follow me. That's the Lord's leadership in life. He leads, we follow. Amen? Even the Bible teaches in Psalm, Psalm uh, 37, I think it's Psalm 37, uh, it even tells us, 37, 23, uh, that, that our steps or ordered, or established, planned out, on purpose, by God. And as we learned today, God's leading might not be the most direct route to where he's going, or to where he wants you to be. Uh, God's leading may not be, might not be the, the quickest way. It might not be the most obvious way. But he'll get you there where he wants you to be with what he wants you to do when it's time. Because our life is not is not on hold. Life goes on. 
And I have to tell you this, and I'm going to be through, that God knows them, God knows it, God knows what's up, God knows how, it's, how it is. And God knows if you go certain ways in your life, God knows what you'll see won't be good for you, will not be helpful, will not actually hinder you in you following him. God knows, God knows. So God will take you the route that is best for you, even though it may not be the quickest and it may not be the shortest, but it will surely get you to where he wants you to be. And in the meantime, he'll take care of you. He'll provide, protect, and, uh, and prepare you for when you arrive. So God knows them, or God knows what's up. And you know something else with all this? God knows you. God knows you better than you do. God knows you better than your husband or wife does. God knows you better than your best friend. God knows you better than that Christian that stood by your side and, and been a brother or sister in Christ and just loved you and helped you your whole life. God knows you better than they do. God knows you. God knows me. And God, God knows what we would see along the way, what would harm us, what would help us, what would hinder us, what would tempt us to go back instead of forward. God knows also what we would see that would help us to go forward, help us in our walk, that would help us in our Christian growth, that will help us in his will going where he has us to be. God knows you, and last of all, should be very obvious, which I'm glad for. Uh, sad to say, I, I think most of us, uh, I think all of us, at time to time, we, we think we know what we're doing, but sometimes that's not the case. But the last thing I want to remind you of that I hope you saw today from this brief sermon is that I want you to see that God knows what he's doing. And you ought to thank him for that, you know. Sometimes in the world in which we live, we wonder if we know what we're doing. We wonder what other people know what they're doing. We wonder some, you know, people in authority and leadership, we wonder if they know what in the world they're doing, you know, but God knows what he's doing. And it's always to fill his holy purposes, to accomplish his will, to honor the Son, to give the Father glory, and for us to be, be a, a minister and a blessing to somebody else along the way as, as God leads us. So we're thankful for him today. And I want you to remember this, that life is still going on even though it's not the same. It is different. Um, and there are definitely limitations right now in many areas about life and family and even church. But that doesn't mean nothing's going on. And, and, and don't wait for everything to get back to normal. God is still leading in your life. God still has purpose and meaning. God has people for you to see and meet and minister to. And uh, God cares about you and providing and preparing, pointing the way and leading you in the way which you should go. And thank God he knows what it takes to get us where he wants us to be. Because he, of all people, he knows what he's doing. God bless you all. Thank you for watching us today. And uh, keep our ministry in prayer. Keep one another in prayer. You know, keep communicating to one another. And Lord willing, soon we'll be able to be back together again. God bless you all.